Well, hello, hello, hello. Uh, here I am in my kitchen wearing my In-N-Out Burger t-shirt and with something very exciting to tell you. Uh, we just posted our brochure for our Footsteps of Paul tour uh, coming up in April of 2022. I can't tell you how many people we've had call us and ask about when we're doing this. We haven't done it since 2018 and we're very excited about this. Uh, we, uh, because of COVID concerns, have eliminated the crews uh, from the itinerary and instead substituted extra time both in Rome uh, and in Greece. So it's just going to be an awesome tour. Now, we don't have that many spots, so I'm telling you the truth. Uh, you need to move on this if you're interested. And um, uh, you must be vaccinated in order to be able to go. So other than that, uh, uh, call me if you have any questions, 703-280-1114. It's on the brochure, 703-280-1114. And now, here's Live with Lon. Well, hello there, and welcome to Live with Lon. We're so glad that you're with us today, and we've got a wonderful passage from the uh, wonderful Word of God to study today. Uh, I know my hair's a little long. I'm getting a haircut uh, later this week, uh, so easy. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, uh, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for the privilege of studying your Word today. Lord, forgive us for our sins this week. Let's take a moment and confess those. And I ask God to forgive us. And now let's ask the Lord to fill us with his spirit and illuminate the word of God to our hearts. May our hearts be open and pliable in your hands, Lord, and may this be a message that brings great hope and assurance to our hearts, and we pray this in Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen, and what? Amen. There you go. All right. Well, uh, I am so happy to be here uh, teaching the Word of God to you today. And, you know, here at Lon Solomon Ministries, we do what I think every preacher is supposed to do. We teach the Bible, the whole Bible, say it with me, the whole Bible, nothing but the Bible, and then we apply it uh, to our lives. So, that's what we're going to do today. We're in the Gospels. Remember, we were in the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and we uh, did... Uh, did them all the way up to the triumphal entry. And now uh, we've gone back to John's gospel and we're going to pick up John's gospel and we're going to take it all the way up to John chapter 12 to the triumphal entry. Then we'll merge the four gospels and talk about their accounts of the last earthly week of Jesus's life. So, are you ready? We're using the New King James Version of the Bible, and we're in John chapter 1. Now, a little bit of background. John the Baptist came baptizing uh, to the Jordan River right down by Jericho, and he had been told by God uh, that when the Messiah, the Son of God, showed up, uh, he, that is John, uh, would recognize him because God the Father would have the Holy Spirit descend from heaven and remain on the Messiah. And look what uh, John says. Uh, we've already covered it. Uh, John chapter 1, verse 31. And I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore, I came baptizing with water. Verse 32. And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him, Jesus. And I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water, God, 
said to me, upon whom you see the Holy Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. John says, verse 34, and I have seen and testified that this, that is the Lord Jesus, is the Son of God. So we have John's testimony uh, uh, that uh, God gave him the, uh, well, the message, the way to identify the Messiah like this, and John says, Jesus is he. Now, we'll come back to that in a few moments because it's, it's something that's important for what we're going to talk about later, but let's press on, okay? And again, the next day, John stood with two of the disciples, his disciples, and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, behold, the Lamb of God. Just like he said in verse 29, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We're talking about uh, the uh, scapegoat lamb in the Day of Atonement where the sins of all of Israel are put on him and he is run out into the wilderness never to be seen again. And God forgives all those sins. The Lord is the scapegoat upon whom all of our sins are laid. Uh, and he went to the cross and paid for them all. And we don't see those sins again in the sight of God. Okay, now... And the two disciples heard him, John, speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and seeing them following, said to them, what do you seek? And they said to him, Rabbi, which is to say, when translated from Hebrew, teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, come and see. And they came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day, for it was about the 10th hour. Okay, the day begins at 6 a.m., so the 10th hour would be around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, one of the two who heard John the Baptist speak and followed him, Jesus, was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, We have found the Messiah which is translated into Greek, the Christ. Uh, by the way, when we say Jesus Christ, uh, Christ was not Jesus' last name. Uh, it is an appellation. It is a title meaning Jesus the Messiah, the Christos, the Chosen One, which is what the Hebrew word Mashiach means. So uh, when we say Jesus Christ, we're saying Jesus the Messiah. When we read in the Bible, Christ Jesus, it means the Messiah, Jesus. Okay, we good. Let's go on. Verse 42, and he brought Peter to Jesus. And when Jesus looked at him, he said, you are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. And by the way, in Greek is the word Petros, or Peter. Now, verse 43. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip up in Galilee, and he said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. They were from there too. Now, right up on the north side of the Sea of Galilee. And Philip found Nathanael, a friend of his, and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, come and see. And Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile, no falseness, no uh, lack of integrity. And Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? And Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, 
when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Now, wait a minute. What is Jesus saying here? Well, Jesus is saying that he was able to see uh, Nathaniel sitting under the fig tree when Philip got there, even though he wasn't anywhere near eyesight range. Uh, only God could do that. Uh, uh, you know, that would be like standing in Washington, D.C. and meeting someone from Lancaster, Pennsylvania and saying, uh, oh, when, when you were sitting under the tree on the bench this morning, I saw you. Uh, how would you know he was sitting under the tree on a bench if you weren't up there? Obviously. And, and, and Nathaniel immediately knew this has got to be God. Look what he said. Nathaniel answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And I love what Jesus answered. Jesus answered and said to him, because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. Jesus says to him, hey, Nathaniel, my friend, you ain't seen nothing yet. I'm going to turn water into wine. I'm going to heal thousands of people. I'm going to walk on water. Uh, I'm going to raise Lazarus from the dead. And I'm going to raise myself from the dead. You ain't seen nothing yet, baby. Uh, you think this is something? Well, just buckle your seatbelt, Nathaniel, and hang on. Last verse. And he said to him, Jesus said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, hereafter, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Now, this is a, a, a wonderful passage of scripture uh, showing us how when we meet the Messiah, uh, when we meet uh, the Christ, when we meet the Lord of glory uh, in a personal way, uh, uh, the very first response that we should have, which is the very response these folks had, uh, Andrew and Philip, is that they ran to tell their best friends. They ran to tell their brother. Uh, uh, Andrew ran to tell his brother Peter. And, uh, Philip ran to tell his friend Nathaniel. They were so excited. Uh, um, why? because they had met the living Christ. And, and I hope uh, that each of us uh, are so excited every morning when we interact with the living Christ that as we go out that day, uh, we are anxious. We are chomping at the bit. Uh, we are, as Peter said, always ready to give an answer to those who ask about the hope in us. We're wanting to share Christ. We're anxious to share Christ. We're looking for opportunities to share Christ. Uh, that's what these early disciples did. And friend, I hope that you and me, uh, yeah, uh, if we get a full dose of Jesus in the morning, I promise you, uh, that's what we're going to go out being willing to do. And if we're not willing to go out and do that, we maybe we just didn't get uh, a full dose of Jesus in the morning. A full dose of Jesus in the evening's great. Uh but when we really need it, is to, uh, to be charged up like that is when we head out in the morning, out into the highways and the byways uh, to tell people about the Lord. Now, uh, that's the end of our passage. Uh, but we're going to stop now. We're going to ask our most important question. Are you ready? Here we go. Come on now. Here we go. One, two, three. So what? Yeah, baby. And you know what I love to say? How, come on, say it with me. Come on. How sweet it is. You bet. Now, I want to talk to you today about what Jesus said here to Nathaniel uh, just at the end of the chapter. I want you to look back. And uh, verse 49, here, we'll put it on the screen. Nathanael answered and said, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. You saw me under the fig tree. Only 
God could do that. And Jesus answered and said to him, because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. Wow, okay. And we already talked about some of these greater things. Now, folks, the early disciples were not crazy. The early disciples were not lunatics. The early disciples were not psychologically unbalanced. The early disciples were not on drugs. <laughs> the early disciples were not on LSD and having acid trips uh, and hallucinations. No, 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 no. These were everyday fishermen. Uh, these were, were down-to-earth, uh, common men uh, who, who, uh, who knew what they saw and saw what they knew. And, they, you know, things were very basic to these guys. Why do I emphasize that? Because their testimony to us today as believers is critical to our faith. Uh, they wrote the New Testament testifying uh, to Jesus as the Son of God. They recorded the events as they happened, all these miraculous events, testifying to us that Jesus is the Son of God. They wrote letters to us saying, trust us, Jesus is the Son of God. I want you to see what Peter wrote uh, in his letter, Second Peter. Let's turn there, chapter 1, uh, verse 16. For, Peter says, we have not followed cunningly devised fables. Uh, this is the title of the message. Cunningly devised fables. What does that mean? Well, first of all, let's start with the word fable. The word fable means something that's not true. Uh, a story uh, that's not true. Uh, a made-up, uh, fictional uh, account of something that's not true. Uh, then, uh, cunningly uh, means uh, sneaky and uh, uh, something that attempts to mislead people, uh, something that is very uh, cleverly contrived. Uh, and so we have not followed cleverly contrived, meant to, to mislead us, false stories, and the word devised means that it was on purpose. The word devised means that it was deliberately done, this was. So we have not followed, Peter is saying, cunningly, sneaky, uh, uh, meant to, dis, to mislead us, devised on purpose, falsehoods. Okay, you got it. That's not what we're following when we follow Jesus. Look, he goes on, when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Where was that? Well, friends, it was the, uh, uh, the transfiguration. Well, well, let's come back to Second Peter, but let's go to the transfiguration. We'll go to Luke chapter 9. Uh, go with me here. Uh, look at verse 28. And it came to pass about the eight days after these sayings that he took Peter, who's writing this letter, uh, John, whose letter we're going to look at in a minute, and James, and went up on the mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered, and his robe became white and glistening. And behold, two men talked with him who were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his decease, his death, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Uh, but Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep, and when they were fully awake, they weren't hallucinating, uh, they weren't dreaming, when they were fully awake, they saw his glory, the Lord's, and the two men who stood with him, uh, and it came to pass as they departed from him that Peter said to Jesus, Master, it's good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. And while he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them. 
And they were fearful as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son. Hear, listen to him. Now let's go back to 2 Peter 1. Peter says we were not, we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty up on the mountain. Watch, for he, Jesus, received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory, quote, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Now watch. And we heard this voice, Peter said, which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. We were there. We heard it. We saw it with our own eyes. And we're here to tell you, this thing's not a hoax. This thing's not a fable. Uh, this thing's not a myth. Uh, this thing's not a hallucination. Uh, this thing's not a dream. Uh, this is real. And John echoes this. He Remember, he was up on the mountain too. Let's look at 1 John uh, chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. Look what he says, verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard. He's talking about Jesus here which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life for the life that is Jesus, the, the, the second person of the Godhead was made known, was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the father and was manifested to us that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. What does is, what is John emphasize over and again? We have seen... We have seen, we have seen, we have heard, uh, seen with our own eyes. We've handled and touched the Messiah himself. Uh, wow. John was up there. He saw just what, what Peter did. And he's trying to say to us, listen, I was up there too. I saw and I, and I heard and I, I've touched the real Jesus who was here in the incarnation in a human body. And what I'm telling you is true. Now, you say, well, Lon, this is wonderful. Uh, but, you know, uh, maybe this was a con. Uh, maybe they were deceived somehow. Uh, maybe they were having, an, uh, you know, some kind of a uh, 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 a hoax that they were involved in trying to spin off on the rest of the world. Uh, folks, these guys were martyred for their faith. All of the disciples, except for John, who was, who was punished for his faith, uh, exiled to the island of Patmos for years. Uh, friends, you don't die before hoax that you're running. I mean, up to the point where you get caught? Yeah, okay. Uh, but once you're caught and somebody's going to cut your head off, you're like, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Dude. No, no, no. Uh, I'll recant everything I said about Jesus. None of it's true. It was all a hoax that we made up. Uh, we're just running a con game. My friends, uh, people who die rather than recant, they're not running a hoax. And that's what John says. And that's what Peter says, we saw, we heard, we touched, we rubbed shoulders with the real Jesus Christ. And we're here to tell you, this is not a cunningly devised fable that you're believing. But this is the
the truth. And we'll give our lives rather than deny it. And this is what Peter says uh, in his first letter. Uh, look, uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, uh, look with me, uh, uh, verse 8. Uh, the Bible says, Whom, talking about Jesus, having not seen, you love. And though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice full of joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls, of this salvation the prophets preached. And, and we've talked before about the probability of the Lord Jesus fulfilling all of the messianic prophecies of the Old Testament being an astronomical number, one times ten with a hundred zeros after it. And this is what Peter says. You don't just have our eyewitness testimony, you've also got the messianic prophecies uh, and those amazing probabilities uh, that the Lord Jesus uh, accomplished because he is the real Son of God. He is the real Messiah and the second person in the Godhead, God in the flesh. And what do we receive as a result of believing this? We receive the salvation of our souls, even though we don't see the Lord. Peter saw him. John saw him. Uh, these people testified of him. Now, we haven't seen him, but we believe their testimony, among other things, uh, the prophecies and the word of God. But we believe their testimony, and we will receive, what did Peter say here? The end of your faith, verse 9, 1 Peter 1, the salvation of your souls. Friends, I'm here to tell you today uh, what Jesus said to Nathaniel is right. Nathaniel, you ain't seen nothing yet, buddy. And all that he showed him and the other disciples is why Peter says categorically and unequivocally, we have not followed cunningly devised fables. This is the truth. And if you'll believe that, you'll receive the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. You know, um, eyewitness testimony like Peter and John gave is very valuable, especially when it's connected to a conviction uh, that something is true. Uh, I was, Brenda and I uh, were uh, away this past weekend uh, with some good friends. Uh, we were down uh, 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 staying at their house and we were in the South, baby. We were in the, the, the way down South, baby. And I was raised in the South, uh, and I love Southern food. Oh, man, do I love Southern food. Southern food will do two things for you. It'll thrill your soul, and, and it'll shorten your life. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, it's wonderful to eat, and it'll shorten your life uh, uh, with <laughs> the way they cook it. But that's okay. I, I, I love Southern food. And while we were down there, we went to a restaurant uh, one day. And the cook, the owner's name is Bubba. Now, friends, you know you're in the South if you meet somebody named Bubba. And that's his, that's his name. I met him. I talked to him. I sent him my testimony when I got back home because I didn't happen to have any cards with me. But I'm telling you, that food, you say, what did you get? Oh, man, I got I got barbecue, pork. Yeah, baby, I'm free from the law, you know? Praise the Lord Jesus. With coleslaw. And then I got a side of jalapeno coleslaw. Oh, oh man. And I got, you know what else I got? I got collard greens. Oh, baby. Made with bacon. And I'm sure bacon fat. And oh, man, oh, Shevitz. I'm telling you. You say, what did you just say? I said, man o uh, um, If you don't know what man o is, <laughs> you're not Jewish. It's cheap uh, uh, wine. Um, and I'll tell you, that food was so good. And if you were to ask me, should I go down there when I go down south and eat at Bubba's place? I would say to you, I told him, I said, Bubba, I wanted to order one of everything on the menu. He had 
corn pones. He had everything. If you don't know what a corn pone is, <laughs> you're not from the South. Oh, man. I'm, I, when I said that, I said, Brenda, I want to order one of everything. She said, yeah, well, you're not. Uh, uh, yeah. So I didn't. But when you get my testimony that you should go eat at Bubba's place if you like Southern food, friends, I know I'm telling you the truth. I, I can't tell it to you with more conviction than I'm telling it to you now. I saw it. Uh, I, I, I touched it. I ate it. I experienced it. I heard it right in front of me. Uh, oh, man. Eyewitness testimony when it's backed with that kind of conviction, like Peter, like like John, uh, like me, uh, for Bubba's food, uh, it's meaningful. Unless I'm a complete idiot, which I'm not, which Peter's not, which John's not, friends, this is not a cunningly devised fable. This thing we call Christianity, this thing we call believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and trusting what he did on the cross to pay for our sin. And if you will believe it, just simply believe it and cling to it, what does the Bible say? You will receive the end of your faith. And what is that? The salvation of your soul. Praise the Lord. Can I get a praise the Lord out there? Praise the Lord. Friends, hang on to the word of God. Hang on to this eyewitness testimony. Hang on to the uh, Jesus fulfilling the messianic prophecies. Hang on to the word of God and what it says. And you'll receive the end of your faith, Peter says, the salvation of your soul. Don't you let people cause you to doubt. No, no. They're trying to wreck your faith and steal your soul. No, no. And Peter talks about these kind of people uh, in, in 2 Peter chapter 2. Look with me if you would at, at verse 18. Uh, he says, for when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure, uh, they tempt through the lusts of the flesh, through licentiousness, which, which means a sexual lust, those who have actually escaped from those who live in error. And look, while they promise them liberty, they themselves, these false teachers, are the slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. What Peter's saying is, uh, they are the slaves of corruption themselves, and they're not going to give anybody liberty. Uh, they're going to lure these folks, maybe you if you're not careful, uh, into the same bondage that they're in to sin, folks. Why? Look at this. They promise people liberty. They themselves are the slaves of corruption. Uh, the, only, the only liberty there is is in the Lord Jesus Christ. For if the Son of Man shall make you free... You shall be free indeed. So if, you're, if your faith has been wavering, it's time to strengthen the hands that hang down and the feeble knees. It's time to stand up and it's time to proclaim that we have not followed cunning, cunningly devised fables. This is not a cunningly devised fable it leads to the salvation of our souls, and it changes us here on earth into people of liberty, children of God. Believe the word of God. It is not a cunningly devised fable. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for reassuring us today that we have not followed craziness. We have not followed uh, some made-up, uh, a myth. We have not followed untruth. Uh, we are not uh, a foolish people for believing the Bible. But Peter saw and, and heard. John saw and heard and touched. And John the Baptist 
saw the Holy Spirit descend on the Lord Jesus Christ and was told, this is the Messiah. Lord, help us believe these godly men's testimonies so that we can receive the end of our faith, the salvation of our soul, and we pray this, strengthen our faith, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Okay. I hope we'll see you again next week on Live with Lon. And remember, we have not followed what? Say it with me. Cunningly devised fables. No, no. It's the truth. May God bless you.